Arturia Effects Collection is an impressive 30 plug-in bundle of preamps and EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays, distortion, modulation and filters. So what's new in Arturia Effects Collection 4? Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. I've actually covered all of the versions of Arturia Effects Collection so far on this channel, so rather than revisit old ground, I thought in this video I'd focus on what's new in Arturia Effects Collection 4. However, if you'd like to find out about all of the plugins in this collection, then I highly recommend you watch my playlist with the other videos that I've made for other versions. You can find a link for that in the description down below. Now I must point out that I'm not being sponsored by Arturia for this video in any way shape or form I've not been required to make the video or say anything specific it's all my own opinion however this video is sponsored by DistroKid if you follow the link in the description down below you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music around the world now let's find out about the first new plugin in this collection it's something I covered on the channel just recently it's a great new reverb plugin <laughs> This collection already includes a number of really useful reverbs, things like this spring reverb here, there's also a plate reverb, and there's this one, Rev Intensity, which continues to be one of my favorite reverbs ever. But new to the family, we have this one, LX24. Now this is based upon a really famous reverb unit from the 1980s from Lexicon, and it was particularly well known for its long, lush, sounding tail. We're going to hear that in a moment. And Arturo have definitely kept the essence of that in terms of the sound of this plugin. They've also kept the essence of the look of the original hardware. However, they haven't cloned it, okay? They've made their own adaptions. I love this about Arturia. They kind of get inspiration, definitely in terms of sound, primarily from the original hardware. But then they look at what the interface was like on the hardware and they say, how can we improve upon that? And that's what they've done here. Now, the original did have this row of buttons and it did have sliders for you to dial in uh, the settings. And some of these are the same or quite similar. Similar, but there's some slight variations as well from the original. But what Arturo have said is, hey, if you don't like dialing in your settings using this, we're going to give you an alternative view, an alternative way of doing it. And we get to that by going to the advanced options up here. So I'll click on that and we can see this very different kind of display. Now in a moment when the audio plays, you're going to see that represented here, but we'll look at that in a moment. But we can change those slider values now here in this sort of graphical representation we'll sort of see the changes that are being made um, when the audio is there so I personally find this uh, a much sort of more intuitive way to dial in the settings so um, it's nice that they give you that alternative also in this advanced view we get some things that were not on the original unit from Lexicon things like uh, the Ducker uh, so a tremolo option and a gate option as well and a few other little bits and pieces there so let's have a listen to this I've got it applied to uh, an acoustic guitar and some vocals, I particularly want you to pay attention to the tail, okay? And you're going to hear it much more in the vocals, which come in a little bit later. Also, when I stop this piece of music, I'm going to stop it in the middle of the vocal performance, and you're really going to hear the tail at that point. So let's have a listen. <laughs> Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? And that kept you running? Was it the feel? And you can hear that long tail there. Um, I think this is just a really awesome plugin to have in your armory. I'm already using it in my productions. I love it so much. It's a great new addition to this collection. <laughs> new to this collection, we have the Rotary CLS222. Now, this is fascinating to me because it's a plugin which is simulating a piece of hardware, which in itself was simulating another piece of hardware. It's based upon the Dynacord CLS222. 
2, which in turn simulated a Leslie rotary speaker. Now, if you don't know what a Leslie rotary speaker is, it was basically uh, an amplifier and speaker cabinet which had two speakers in there, a woofer and a tweeter, and they both mechanically rotated, okay, creating a very specific sound which we will hear in a moment. Now, before I play you that sound, let's just have a quick listen to the piece of music I'm applying it to. And by the way, uh, for this piece of music, I was also using the Arturia Stage 73 piano. It sounds like this without the plug-in switched on. Now I'm going to play you the plug-in, I'm going to turn the plug-in on in its default uh, setting at the moment. Let's just have a quick listen now and hear what it's doing. And you can hear that specifically that left to right movement with that uh, rotation of the speaker being emulated there. Now I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to go right ahead and click on the advanced button up here. The reason I'm doing that is because it re reveals all of these extra controls, but it also reveals this handy uh, display here, which sort of represents to you what's happening, okay, as I'm adjusting some of these controls. At the moment we can see this, what should we call it an orb <laughs> rotating in the middle there and that's the sound that sort of gentle left right sound that we were hearing just a moment ago now if we i was to move this control up here the stereo image you'll see our little uh, orb is saying mostly in the middle yeah and we get this kind of sound not much movement okay now i'll push it up gradually and you'll hear that change And in that super stereo setting, we are getting a really pronounced movement from left to right. Now, in fact, our little orange orb is not a little orange orb. It's two orbs together um, because, remember, we've got two speakers in here, a woofer and a tweeter, which are both being rotated. But at the moment, they're aligned with each other. Um, so they've both got exactly the same movement. Let's change that to uh, something different. We've got uh, different options here. We've got chasing. We've got opposite and we've also got chased here okay so let's go for opposite okay so that our treble and bass you know are moving opposite to each other okay and have a listen to that Yeah, so those lower and higher frequencies are opposite to each other in the stereo image. Now, the other thing that we can adjust is the perceived distance, okay? And we do that with these distant controls over here. So I'm going to do this with the treble controls. Have a listen to this. You can hear that the, the higher frequencies there appearing to sort of come backwards and forwards in terms of volume. Yeah, that's what's really changing the distance mostly there. We've also got some different movement patterns here for, um, with the distance controls here. So we can change that to you know, horizontal eight. OK, and we've got another one here, which is a comb movement. OK, I like the horizontal eight. Now, the other thing that we can do as well as uh, changing the distance here is change the speed of the treble and bass. Um, independently so I'm just going to push up that treble it's pretty fast now okay it's going to sound pretty wacky let's have a listen if you're not careful it can make you feel a little bit seasick little known fact but yeah so that's what's happening there in terms of the speed okay and we can also uh, lock the speed to our door using the sync control here for sort of really uh, musical movements I guess is what you could say now the final control I want to point out here is right in the top left this is the drive control okay and this is really useful if you want to add a little bit of grit okay you've got a couple of different types here um, in terms of overdrive we've got valve and we've got op amp here okay i like the valve one so let's just push that up may adjust that to taste using things like the mix control here as well so all in all i have to say that what i like about this is 
if you want to get that Leslie sound, but you want to have really nice control over it, it's a great plugin for that. I think it does an awesome job. New to this collection is Filter MS20. Now this is based upon the Korg MS20 filters, plus the external processing uh, for the MS20, which is creating distortion as well. And you can see those two basic processes there, filter and distortion, and we can swap the order of them if we wish by clicking this button. So distortion first going into filter. We'll put it back for the moment. Now I'm going to demonstrate basically what this does with a little preset I've made called movement. But before we actually listen to it, of course, we'll need to hear the underlying music without this plugin switched on. And for that, I happen to have used Arturis Pigments and created some big long chords which sound like this. Okay, so what does this plugin actually do? Well, let's switch it on and have a quick listen to what this preset is doing to those big long chords. So you can hear quite a lot of distortion in there and you can hear some filtering going on but notice how it's there's this sort of rhythm going on there's these pulses going on yeah reasonably complex rhythm going on there and that's because of something called modulation okay so for the purposes of what we're talking about here you could say that modulation is able to change the values of some of these controls over time okay and if we go to the advanced uh, area here we click on advanced and reveal the advanced panel we can see that there's three different types of modulation in this plugin we have an envelope follower yeah which is based upon the amplitude of the signal okay how loud the signal is at any particular time we have a step sequencer so you know we can uh, select values here with different steps and that's repeating over time and then we have a function generator for us to get in there and create sort of really complex um, patterns there in terms of modulation okay so the key to this is we can use um, any or all of these th three modulation controls here and apply them to all of these controls that we can see at the top okay now I'm going to switch over to a different preset which I created called still okay so it's the same as the previous one but without any movement we'll have a quick listen Okay, so we've got that distortion happening in there. I'm going to switch that down for the moment, okay? And what I'm going to do is just show you what happens as I move this control here, the low pass. Yes, yeah, so I'm moving it with my mouse. I could use it, move it with a controller keyboard. But what if I want to modulate it? Yeah, move it automatically. Well, let's do that. I'm going to use the function generator here for that. And all I need to do is go to that low pass control. You can see there's three little dials next to it. And each of those relate to each of our three different modulators. The last one there is the function generator. And I'm just going to push the value up here. And you can see that little green glow around the edge of the control. Yeah, that is indicating the the range where this control is going to move according to the function generator okay I'll put it up pretty high so we can see that knob is going to move all the way around to there in effect okay um, if it reaches you know the peak level of the generator there okay let's have a listen to that Yeah, so you can hear that rhythm happening there that's happening from the function generator. And we can do this to not quite all of the controls, um, but almost all of the controls. Of course, we can't do it to the movement control over here. Wouldn't make sense, really, because that's just a blend control to blend the movement in. Let's try it on this wet dry control over here. Um, so if I was to push this up manually, it would sound like this. Yeah, so it's just blending the wet and dry signal. So let's apply um, the step sequencer for that. So I'll put it on pretty much full. So it's really happening there and have a listen now. Okay. 
Yeah, so you get the idea there. So you can build up some really sort of complex uh, movement from a really basic sound using Filter MS20, a great new addition to this collection. So the next plugin I'm going to talk about actually has two main processes which you can either run in serial or you can split the signal between the two, which reminds me of our sponsor DistroKid because they have a great feature called Splits, which enables you to automatically split proceeds from sales amongst various participants in the project at different amounts if you wish. You can also automatically pay people back for any money they've paid up front for the project if they need to be reimbursed. You can do that automatically. It's just one of the great features that you get at DistroKid. So follow the link in the description down below to start distributing your music around the world. You can really mess things up with this cold fire. New to the collection and as you may have guessed this is a distortion plugin okay now I've got it applied to a baseline which I've created in pigments yet again let's just have a listen to that without the distortion switch on So as you can hear, a fairly clean sub bass sound. So let's switch on the distortion with my preset selected, which is my cold fire and have a listen. Now I can promise you, you can get a lot more messed up than that if you want to. I've got some fairly light settings here. Now, what is this all about? We've got a couple of distortion processes going on here. We've got A on the left and B on the right. We can choose the routing. We can go from one to the other, or we can, if we go here, we can swap them over. Um, we can run them in stereo, mid side, parallel, whatever you, you wish to do with that. But I'll continue to run them in serial for the moment. Now, with each of these distortion processes, you can choose all different kinds of distortions. So, uh, for example, here uh, with distortion A, I've got it on tape, but I'll, I could change it to tube or transformer or bit crusher, what have you there. So I'll leave it on tape for the moment, but you get the idea with that. Now, where I think it's really at with this plugin is in the advanced section. So I'll click on advanced at the top here, opens up the rest of this panel here. And as well as being able to now uh, change settings for pre and post filters with each of these distortions, I can also apply modulation. So we've got, uh, what have we got here? Six different modulators we can choose from. And each of these modulators uh, can be either, um, what have we got? An LFO function, a follower, or a sequencer. Okay, I'll leave this on LFO for the moment to demonstrate it. So what I can do is now apply any of these modulators to um, some of the settings that we can see in the top half of the screen. So to do that with this first one, this LFO, I'll just click on Assign, and I'll go and drag the outer ring of this drive control here, okay? So I'll turn it all the way up there. And that is setting the range which will be affected by the modulation here, okay? And you can see it sort of moving up and down there. Let's have a listen to that. Cool, we can do things like increase the rate. Let's do that. And then we can obviously change that from Hertz to actually being synced with the door in some way as well. So you can make it a bit more of a musical change happening there. Um, so that's basically the main options. As I say, you can use LFO. You, we've got a function one here, so you can sort of draw out um, some pretty complex uh, modulation um, envelopes and then we've got also a follower here which is based upon amplitude as we discussed earlier with the other plugin and also a sequencer as well so you can manually set up a sequence um, to change any particular controls and you can apply that to all of the controls at the top there making some pretty interesting um, pulsating distortion sounds so don't forget if you want to find out about all of the other plugins which are in effects collection 4 take a look at this playlist right here starting from version one you can watch all of those videos and find out exactly what's included in this current version